Hey guys, I'm Becky, 52 Baker. Welcome to my channel. Today I'll be sharing with you how it is that I make my yellow roses. I'll also link all of the products that I use in the description box below. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, the materials list is a little bit long, but feel free to pause and take a look at everything we need. A lot of these things are going to be optional. It's all up to you and how detailed you want to make the flower. Okay, we're going to start with the bulb, and I like to make mine a little chunkier and a little shorter so that I get a nice big open rose. We're going to start by cutting our wire whatever size we want and basically shaping it so there's a little circle on top and the stem runs all the way down. Next, go ahead and condition your paste. Knead it up till it's nice and soft. Put a little bit of glue on the tip of the circle, dab off the extra, and shape your teardrop. It should look something like that. Go ahead and put that to dry on your styrofoam board. Oh, really important guys, you're gonna see that I do all my petals at once and I don't cover anything. That's because I'm using a homemade rice paste and so I don't need to, it dries really slowly. But if you're using gum paste or you're new to the paste that you're using, please cover it up and work in sections so that your petals don't dry before you're completely done veining them and giving them their shape. Next, you're going to go ahead and add some cornstarch to your working mat and maybe a little around the ball of your flour paste and roll it, roll it, roll it till it's as thin as you can get it while still being able to pick it up. Now to decide what the size petal I should start with is going to be, I grab the center of my rose and I measure out the petal that reaches about three quarters in height of my center. From here, I use that first size and I cut out five petals. I go one size up, cut another five petals, another size up, another five petals, another size up, another five petals, and my last and fifth size, I cut out six petals. So I, I have 26 petals at the end of this. Once I've cut that all out, I move them to my foam board and I like to use an X-Acto or a scalpel to move them so that I don't rip them if they stick a little. I add cornstarch to the top and I begin to roll it out with my big rolling tool. I use the biggest one I have so that it doesn't add any ruffles to it because I don't want a big ruffly rose. And I start out on the edges and if the center needs any, I go ahead and thin out the center a bit too. I do that to all of my petals and then I start veining. I start at the bottom of the veiner because my smallest rose petals are not going to need all the ruffle that the top of my veiner has. As they get bigger in size, they'll get closer to the top and they'll catch that ruffle and that's totally cool. Sometimes I'll take the rolling tool and I'll thin out the edges a little bit if after veining it I notice that it's a little thick, just so that it still has the vein mark even after I'm pressing it, because I'm pressing it on the veiner. Hopefully that made sense. I go ahead and vein all of my other petals and when I get to the biggest one, you'll notice that it falls out of the veiner. So I line it up at the top, press the top half, I go ahead and peel it off, line it up with the bottom, and then I press only the bottom half while holding the top of my veiner up so that I don't get a double ruffle ridge on my rows. Once I have everything veined, I start putting it on my spoons. I use spoons, but you can use an apple crate, you can use little foam boards, Anything that's round then will give you a cup shape. Once they're on there, I start to roll back the tip, top tips of the petal with a toothpick. And I don't roll it so that it's really curly, I just roll it so that it's not flat. And I try to change how I'm rolling it so it looks a little more natural 
and every petal doesn't have the exact same shape. I go ahead and do that for every single petal that I've cut out. Some of them are going to lose the curl a bit and that's okay, like I said, I don't like them super curly anyway. For the first two sizes that I cut out, I just go ahead and curl them and leave them on the mat, on the flat mat, because they're not going to need that cup shape. They're going to be so close to each other and so tight that even if they had that cup shape, you wouldn't notice it. So I don't even waste the spoon on them, I just leave them on there. Ignore the bigger petals I have on there. Next, I put glue on the top half of my bulb and I grab the smallest petal I have and I just wrap it all around the top. I don't wanna see the center bulb. All I wanna see when I'm looking down on the rose is the petal. I grab another size one petal and I have it wrap around the first one, almost like they're hugging and then I make sure that they're glued on really well so that they stay tight. The next three petals that I'm going to put on, along with all the other petals, I glue only the bottom left half of the petals. And that's because I want them to stay open and I only want one side to stick for right now. I place that petal on the seam of the first two petals where those first two petals meet so that they're overlapping. And then I just continue to place another petal under the one I just placed, and so on and so on. These three should look like a triangle once you're done. For the next size, I'll go ahead and glue the bottom left side of it. You can, you can glue the right side of it if it's easier for you. For me, it's easier to glue the left side. I open up the last petal that I put on there and then I start to work on my overlapping. And I will go around the entire petal just repeating this process. Once I've put all of size two petals on there, I go ahead and I flip it upside down and make sure that the bottoms are glued on really well because I don't want to deal with loose petals later on. I let it dry for a bit and let the other petals that I haven't worked with set. And once they're ready, I continue the process. I want size petals three, four, and five to set up a bit more because they're not going to be as tight. And so they need to be able to hold up their shape a little bit more on their own. Now you'll notice we're getting a little more open on the rows, so they're not going to overlap as much and that's okay. I want a big open rows. Go ahead and I start to add all the sizes until I can't hold the petals anymore and I make sure to glue the bottoms, always. It's such a pain if you wait till the end and then you notice you have some loose petals. At this point, it's going to start getting a little bit bigger so it's easier for me to work upside down. And because I'm overlapping, I don't really need to see the top of the rose. If I need to, I just go ahead and flip it over to make sure I'm still on track. But for now, I just go ahead and work upside down so that I don't have to hold all my petals in place. Because as you can see, my petals are still pretty soft. Now earlier I said that I glue the bottom left half for all of my petals, that's a lie. 
For the last set of petals, for my fifth set, my fifth size, I only glue the bottom tip because I want them to be the most open and so I don't want them held down by glue. Go ahead and find my opening and I just place them all on there. I give it a little press after each one just to make sure it adheres well and I continue on. At the end, I go ahead and add a little extra glue and that's what it looks like. Now for dusting, I'm using Wilton's Yellow and Wilton's Brown. I start off with the yellow and a light fluffy brush and I just dab it on and lightly dust it on all of the petals. And I do that so that it catches the veins of the flower and it really helps to stand out for it to help the vein stand out a bit more so you can see it. It's kind of like the highlighter in makeup. What you're doing right now is you're highlighting and contouring your rose. That's what it is. So now you're going to grab your contour. You're going to add a little bit of brown at a time, mix it in with the yellow, and then with the light fluffy brush, I just lightly dab on the edges so that you can really see that edge and I like the brown because it gives it a little more age it's like the flower has been through stuff it's seen things it's a little roughed up once I'm happy with the edges I go ahead and start to dab the sides of where it's curled underneath the very inside of the petals wherever I think that naturally it would be a little darker that's where I place it. I don't know how, how else to say it except it's just like highlighting and contouring your own face. That's how I do it with the rose. I don't dust the dark brown everywhere. It's just very light so it can catch some veining so it can look a little more defined. And unfortunately on camera it doesn't show as well but it's pretty in real life. And that's it guys. Uh, you just wait for it to dry and you have a beautiful sugar rose. Here go all of my attempts in trying to make a tutorial. Just kept going at it and at it and at it. So clearly I kept finding things that I was missing in the tutorial. Let me know what you think. If there's anything that I missed, um, leave it in the comments below. Let me know, I'll address it. If there's anything that you think that I did well, let me know so I keep doing that also. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the page. Um, if there's anything that you want to see me do, if there's anything you want me to share, leave it in the uh, comments below. Until next time, see you guys. They're so pretty, aren't they?